Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.1.5.2, DNA replication from the AQA A-level biology specification. As always, let's start off with a look at our specification. First, we should know about semi-conservative replication of DNA and that it ensures genetic continuity between generations of cells. We should know the process of semi-conservative replication in terms of the unwinding of the DNA double helix, the breakage of hydrogen bonds between complementary bases, the role of DNA helicase in unwinding DNA, the attraction of new DNA nucleotides to exposed bases on template strands and base pairing, as well as the role of DNA polymerase in joining new adjacent nucleotides. Finally, we should be able to evaluate the work of scientists in validating the semi-conservative model of DNA replication, which was proposed by Watson and Crick. So let's make a start. DNA replicates itself before mitosis and meiosis, which are the two types of nuclear division. This is to ensure that all daughter cells produced have the genetic information to produce all the enzymes and other proteins they need. DNA replication, as proposed by Watson and Crick, is semi-conservative, meaning that each of the two new DNA molecules has one strand from the original molecule and one strand of new material. Semi-conservative replication ensures genetic continuity between generations of cells, meaning that daughter cells inherit their genes from their parent cells. DNA replication is semi-conservative in all living things. So how does DNA replication actually work? You'll need to be able to describe this in an exam. First of all, the enzyme DNA helicase breaks hydrogen bonds between bases on the two strands of DNA. The DNA double helix begins to unwind. Next, each original strand acts as a template for a new strand. Free-floating DNA nucleotides are attracted to their complementary exposed bases on each original strand by hydrogen bonding. This is known as complementary base pairing. Then the enzyme DNA polymerase catalyzes condensation reactions which join the nucleotides of the new strands together by phosphodiester bonds. Hydrogen bonds form between the bases on the original and the new strands. And finally, two new DNA molecules are made, genetically identical to the original molecule. Each new molecule contains one strand of the original molecule and one strand of new material. So now that we've looked at the process of semi-conservative replication, we now need to look at how scientists proved that the Watson and Crick semi-conservative model of DNA replication was actually true. The theory of semi-conservative replication was validated by the Meselson and Stahl experiment. In this experiment, bacteria were grown on a medium containing heavy 15N nitrogen. These bacteria incorporate the nitrogen from the medium into their DNA. A sample of the bacterial DNA is then taken and spun in an ultracentrifuge, and we obtain a heavy band of DNA. Next, bacteria are transferred to a medium containing lighter 14N nitrogen and are allowed to replicate once. A sample of their DNA is taken and spun in an ultracentrifuge. We obtain an intermediate density band of DNA. Finally, the bacteria are allowed to replicate once more in the lighter 14N medium. A sample of their DNA is taken and spun in an ultracentrifuge. This time, we obtain bands of both light and intermediate density DNA. Note that Meselson and Stahl did their experiment by reasoning that bacteria grown on a medium containing heavier 15N nitrogen would have heavier DNA than that of bacteria grown on lighter 14N medium. In addition to semi-conservative replication, there are two main other models of DNA replication which were proposed, conservative and dispersive. In conservative replication, it was proposed that the original DNA molecule would stay the same and a new DNA molecule consisting entirely of new material would be formed. However, after the first generation in the Meselson and Stahl experiments, we knew it could not be conservative, as you'd have two different bands, light and heavy. The other model was dispersive, which proposed that the original DNA molecule would be cut up into sections and then you'd be left with two new DNA molecules made up of a mixture of new and original material. However, after the second generation, we knew it could not be dispersive, as you just have intermediate density DNA. Great, that would be DNA replication covered. We know that semi-conservative replication of DNA ensures genetic continuity between generations of cells. We know the process of semi-conservative replication in terms of the unwinding of the double helix, the breakage of hydrogen bonds between complementary bases, the role of DNA helicase in unwinding DNA, the attraction of new DNA nucleotides to expose bases on template strands and base pairing, as well as the role of DNA polymerase in joining new adjacent nucleotides. Finally, we have covered the work of scientists in validating the semi-conservative model of DNA replication, which was proposed by Watson and Crick. 
that would be it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment. Next time, we will be covering ATP.